Thank you for joining us this Monday of Passion Week. We're investigating what happened with Jesus each day of Passion Week leading up to the death, burial, and resurrection. Our reading is from the book of Mark, chapter 12. We're going to begin with verse 28 to 34. And one of the scribes came, and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment of all? And Jesus answered him, The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. And the second is like, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. And the scribe said unto him, Well, master, thou hast said the truth, for there is one God and none other but he. And to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the soul and with all the strength and to love his neighbor as himself is more than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. And when Jesus saw that he answered discreetly, he said unto him, Thou art not far from the kingdom of God. And no man after that durst or dared ask him any question. Jesus had already had a discussion with the Sadducees in which he absolutely affirmed the truth of the resurrection. Now remember, this is what happened on Monday of Passion Week. These were the conversations that Jesus had. These were the questions he asked. These were the teachings that he taught. So he affirmed the absolute truth of the resurrection. We will live again. We are not simply matter that dies and then decomposes and there is absolutely nothing. We are made in the image of God. We are eternal beings. We will live forever. Even when we die in this flesh, this flesh is merely our temporary home. It is our house of clay. We're using it for a while. We sometimes grow attached to it, and I don't know why, because it's constantly in flux. It's constantly changing. And as far as the flesh is concerned, it's generally changing for the worse. But it's, it's okay. It's a tent. And it's going to fall down and blow away someday. But Jesus said there is a resurrection. You will live again. So don't put too much emphasis on this flesh. Respect it as the temple of God. Respect it as your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you. Other than that, recognize it's a temporary abode. It's the house that we're living in for a while. Here's where we live while we work for God. But let's work for God. So he established the resurrection. And then one of the, one of the scribes asked him, probably trying to put him on the spot. Which is the greatest of all the commandments? And of course, Jesus went to the Shema, which we find in Deuteronomy chapter 6. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. The greatest commandment begins with the affirmation that there is only one God. This is the foundational principle of the universe. And in this last week, his last Monday on earth as a man, before his death, burial, and resurrection, he pointed again to this foundational truth. There is only one God. It is part of the greatest commandment. Without, without the foundation of the Shema, that there is only one God, then you don't have the love God or love your neighbor. 
Everything is built on the bedrock of one God. He didn't just say, the greatest commandment is love the Lord your God, and the second is love your neighbor. He said, the greatest commandment is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. There is only one God. Then, with that foundation laid, you can go on. You must love the Lord your God. Love him with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength. Love him. This is the greatest commandment. And we know that there is a place for the fear of God, but that's not fearing God is not the first commandment. Loving God is the first commandment. With everything you've got, all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength, love him with everything. Don't put anything before God. That's idolatry. When you love something else, instead of God, or equal with God, or greater than God, if you can't love God, if, if there's anything else that, that takes away enough of your love or part of your love so that you cannot give God all the love of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, then that other thing is idolatry. And the greatest commandment is to give God all of that love. Love him with all of your heart, all of your soul, all of your mind, all of your strength, all of your understanding. And then the second is like Jesus said. It's similar. You should love your neighbor as you love yourself. And so Jesus went beyond what he was asked. He went the second mile. He went beyond the call of duty, so to speak. He not only answered the question, which is the first commandment, he also answered, which is the second commandment? In other words, if you're really truly going to love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength, you must of necessity also love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because you, you do not truly love God. You do not truly love God with all of your heart, soul, mind, and strength unless you love your neighbor as you love yourself. Jesus was, Jesus was telling these people and, and many in his audience on this Monday of Passion Week were the religious, were the Pharisees, and were those that were gathered on Temple Mount. They were gathered in the temple, and, and he was letting them know your religion, your, your devotion to God is not complete unless you love your neighbor as you love yourself. And they may have been reminded of an earlier teaching when one of them had asked, who is my neighbor? And Jesus then told the parable of the, of the Good Samaritan. And the Jews, of course, did not care for the Samaritans. They, they would walk around their territory. They, they looked down their noses at them. They were, they were very, uh, very biased against Samaritans. But Jesus pointed out, the Samaritan was your neighbor. And so when answering the question, which is the greatest commandment, he also brought in the second commandment and said, but you're not really loving God. You can go through all of your emotions and all of your commotions and everything else that you do, but you're not really loving God if you don't love your neighbor. You've got to love your neighbor as you love yourself. And if you don't, then I don't think you're really keeping the first commandment. You can't just say, oh, I love God. I, I'm keeping the first commandment, but I'm not doing very well on the second one. Well, if you're, going to, if you're going to keep the first commandment, you better practice the second one. Otherwise, you're not truly following in the footsteps of Jesus. True religion and undefiled is this. You care even for the widows and the orphans. You care for people who cannot help themselves 
I know it's confusing in our society today, uh, recognizing really who is in need of help and who is not really in genuine need. But we need to pray that God would give us wisdom and guidance that doesn't need to keep us from giving. I'd rather make a mistake in giving to someone who didn't truly need it than to err in not giving at all just because I was afraid of giving to somebody who really didn't need it and maybe, they're, maybe they, they could be working if they wanted to and maybe they're going to abuse it on drugs or alcohol or whatever. That, that, that bothers me too. But I'd rather give and make a mistake and give to someone who doesn't need it than to never give at all. And so if you're going to love God, that's the first commandment, love your neighbor, that's the second commandment, as you love yourself. And, and I spoke recently about this. We need to come to terms with the fact that we truly love ourselves. This is not bad, this is good. You need to love yourself because you're made in the image of God. God loves you, you're valuable to God. He wants you to love yourself, take care of yourself, be good to yourself. Not selfish, not totally self-centered, but love yourself like God loves you. Love yourself like you love your children or, or your spouse or you want to be loved. Love yourself, respect yourself. God loves you. And so that was the second commandment. Jesus felt it was important enough to talk about these things on this day, this Monday. And then there was something else while he was there in the temple, uh, verses 41 to 44 of, of Mark chapter 12. And Jesus sat over against the treasury and beheld or watched how the people cast money into the treasury. And many that were rich cast in much. And there came a certain poor widow, and she threw in two mites. That was the smallest coin you could get, a mite. It was like it would take, uh, I, I, have some, I have some mites. They were old portions of shekels uh, from, from Israel from many years ago, at that time, it would take 1,500 of those to make a dollar. 1,500 to make a dollar. So uh, it would take 15 to make a penny. They weren't worth much. That's a mite. It's called the widow's mite. And this woman threw in two mites, which made a farthing in that day, and he called unto him his disciples. He called them over. He said, come here, come here. And he said, verily I say unto you that this poor widow has cast more in than all they which cast into the treasury. For they did all cast, or they did cast in, all they did cast in of their abundance, but she of her want did cast in all that she had even all her living. She just had enough to buy a sparrow or two. That was it. And she gave it. Don't you think that the God who stood there watching what she did that day rewarded her? Don't you think he made sure that she got a blessing? I promise you she did. She went saying, I'll give all I have. And she wound up, I promise you, I've been there. When I was, when I was a boy, I had, I can remember 16 cents, a dime, a nickel, and a penny. And it was burning a hole in my pocket because when I was, when I was 10 years old, I could, I could take that to the jolly cone and for 10 cents, I could, buy a, I could buy a small vanilla Coke or a cherry Coke. Then I could walk to Bag and Basket Market or Martin's Market down the street, and I could buy a full-size Hershey candy bar for a nickel and a piece of double bubble bubble gum for that extra penny. I could be set, 16 cents was a lot of money. 
And I know you're thinking I'm 150 years old, but I'm not quite that old. That money was burning a hole in my pocket. And I was sitting in church, sitting on the pew, and it was offering time, and the offering plate was being passed. They would, they would put the plate at the end of the, the row, and then they would pass it down the pew. And when it came my direction, I just I could feel that money in my pocket growing heavier and heavier. And when that offering plate got right in front of me, I reached in my pocket and pulled it all out and put it in and forgot about it until just a few days later, it may have been that same, same day, my pastor was preaching a message on giving God your pennies and him repaying you with riches. And he was looking for an example and I happened to be sitting on the front bench next to Johnny Albo. And he said, Johnny Albo, come here. And uh, he was demonstrating this message, so he, he reached in his pocket and pulled out a handful of pennies. And he said, hold out your hand. And he gave those pennies to Johnny Albo and said, there, I've, I've given you these pennies. They're yours. You can do whatever you want to with them. And then he said, would you, would you give them to me? Would you trust me with them? And he held out his hand, and Johnny Albo put the pennies in his hand and Brother Terry took them and threw them uh, and they went, they went spinning along across the floor. We didn't have carpet. We had tile floors and you could hear those pennies clinking and clattering. And, and, then, he, and then he said, uh, you gave them to me, right? You, you, you trusted me with them, right? And I just threw them away. And Johnny Elbow just kind of shrugged his shoulders. And my pastor then pulled his wallet out and pulled a $5 bill. Now, remember, for 16 cents, I could buy a Coke, a candy bar, and a piece of gum. For 16 cents. Can you imagine what I could get with $5? He pulled that $5 bill out and said, Now, if I give you this $5, will you forget about those pennies? And Johnny Albo said, I don't know. Ooh, that was the wrong answer. Brother Terry said, sit down. Sit down. So he, he didn't get the pennies or the $5. And Brother Terry said, Johnny King, you come here. I had the answer. He went through the same thing. He pulled out some pennies and put them in my hand and then said, okay, you can do whatever you want to. You don't have to give those to me. But when he said, would you give them to me and trust me with them? I gave them to him. I didn't hesitate. And when he went and threw them across the floor, my little brother went chasing for pennies. That's what some people are doing today. They're chasing for pennies. They're chasing for pennies that some of us gave up. They're chasing for pennies that some of us threw away. They're chasing for pennies that some of us turned over to Jesus and said, here, Jesus, you can have these. I don't need these. I don't care what you do with them. And some people are, chasing for pennies, crawling on the floor. Brother Terry pulled, a, pulled that $5 out of his wallet. He said, if I give you this $5, will you forget all about those pennies? I said, you bet. And he kind of stepped back and said, well, I don't bet, do you? I said, no, sir, but I'll forget all about those pennies. So he gave me $5. Do you think that was totally unrelated to the 16 cents I put in the offering plate. Never in my whole life have I ever, from that day until this, thought that that was just a coincidence. God was teaching a little boy a lesson. Trust me with your 16 cents. I'll take care of you. Yeah, you, you can get a Coke, you can get a candy bar, you can get a piece of bubble gum. Is that what you want? Then hold on to your 16 cents. Don't give it. Go get your Coke. Get your candy bar. Get your piece of gum. Enjoy it. It's legal. Do it. But if you want to see God do something big, 
throw your two mites into the treasury. Jesus cared. Here was Jesus. It was his last week. It was his last Monday alive before the resurrection. And he's spending time standing and watching as people come into the temple, bringing their offerings and throwing their offerings, casting their offerings into the treasure. He's watching what people give. And he's probably paying attention to the attitude that they give with, for the Lord loveth a cheerful giver, right? And he said he saw rich men throwing in much, but he was so impressed with this widow woman that threw in two mites that he called his disciples and said, look at this. She gave more than all of them. And we thank God for those that God has blessed and they give generously and abundantly. But I also thank God for those who don't have much and they give unselfishly. And I know that they're gonna get a blessing because God pays attention, not necessarily to how much you give, but sometimes he pays attention to how much you have left. Does that mean we want everybody to give everything? No, no, I don't want everybody to go on welfare. We, the church cannot become a welfare society. We can't support everybody. If you quit your jobs and, and you sell your houses, and no, 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 that's, that's not what I'm saying. But sometimes the Lord deals with us to give our 16 cents when that's all we have. There's been a couple of times that I have felt impressed to give it all. And my wife, who uh, has, has taken care of her jobs, paying the bills and making sure all the bills are paid. And, uh, you know, I put the money in the bank and, and she takes care of it and, and pays all the bills. Sometimes she, she was saving up to pay bills. She didn't know what I had in mind. She didn't know what I was feeling, but she never complained. Thank God for a good wife. I thank God that, that my wife is not materialistic. I thank God. She's satisfied. She's happy. She doesn't want expensive stuff. Woo! I could talk in tongues right now. I thank God for a wife. Guys, if you're not married and you're looking for a wife, find one that's not materialistic. Find one that's satisfied and happy with the simple things with inexpensive things. Find one that's just as happy driving a little Toyota as a Mercedes Benz or whatever the in, in fashion car is today. Thank God for a good wife. She didn't complain when I came home and said, I feel like giving everything. We're gonna empty our bank account. We're gonna empty our piggy bank. If we have any, if we have any coins in the, in the ashtray of the car, everything. Every penny we can lay our hands on is going in the offering. And we did. We've done that once or twice. And sometimes it caught her by surprise. And the bills, you know, bills got paid, but she had saved up to pay them. And, and she never complained. I, I, don't, I don't regret doing that. Never. Now, did, did I see something great as a result of that? If I were to look, Maybe so, but that wasn't my purpose. I didn't give trying to finagle God into something. I didn't give trying to say, okay, God, now I want you to do this or this. I just did it because I wanted to. And I had a wife that was like-minded and she wanted to. And there have been many, many, many times that we have both felt the same amount to give for a particular offering. And, and she'd say, I, I feel like, this amount, I'd say that's exactly what I was thinking. And I thank God for that. So, does God pay attention to what we give? Yes, he did on the last Monday, the Monday of Passion Week, the Monday that he was facing crucifixion just a few days later. I hope that you've enjoyed this Monday observation of Passion Week. This happened in the temple. 
And I hope that you will join us uh, on the next session as well tomorrow evening at 7.30 for uh, Tuesday's teachings of Passion Week. Thank you and God bless you.